be very happy to, to hear the works of, as we all are, I guess, of Clarence and Matt. And um, I guess Matt is up first, so I'm going to read Matt's bio real quick for you, in case you missed it. Matt McBride's work has previously appeared or is forthcoming from Court Green, Cream Sayer Review, Cortland Review, Diagram, Fence, Wernista, uh, Mississippi Review, Ninth Letter, Pink, Tupelo Quarterly, and Typo, among others. His first book, City of Incandescent Light, was published by Blackhorns Press in 2018. Currently, he's an instructor at Wilson College, where he teaches in the English department and an inter interdisciplinary MFA program. How cool and accomplished. Matt, take it away. All right. Um, yeah, so thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I'll, be, I'll try and not, not take too much time. Um, so yeah, these are all from my, my book. Um, just, there's a link, so I don't really need to hold it up. Um, oh my god, Michael Rarick! Oh man, um, good to see you, Michael. Um, so um, I, will, I will get going, but this is, yeah, um, this is great. I haven't seen Michael in forever, um, literally, and, literally and figuratively. Um, and thank you everyone for coming too. I know like Zoom is just like exhausting and I know many of you probably work in education and so Zoom fatigue is just like such a real thing. Um, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll just get started. So um, there's kind of two threads in the book. Um, one, which is just the year. And then I talk about what happened during that year. Um, I never said I was Shakespeare. Um, so, um, this first one is called 2015. After our last session with the marriage counselor, we found a skeleton bleaching on the river's lip. The trouble was our dreams were commercial in the end. It was only a deer died crossing the river before it froze. After the police left, we joked about being a divorced private detective duo. It was 2015 for the first time in history, and we stumbled like prom dates on new boot. Um, and then so the other um, I do are like, um, they're, uh, oh no, was I muted? Oh no, okay, good. I had a weird message that said you were unmuted by host, and I was like, oh no. Um, Zoom raises all kinds of new anxieties we didn't have before, um, including being muted when you have, as if tech didn't, didn't have enough. Uh, but anyways, um, the other ones I would take like a, a feeling and I would try and spatialize it um, and think about it, you know, what, what if that was a place um, and this poem um, came out of some conversations with a friend, actually, who's a really good poet named Yvette Nepper, who I haven't seen in a long time. Um, but this one's called City of the Vulnerable. You carry a sharpened melon baller and portion yourself to every stranger. You watch eight millimeter films of the rain on bedroom walls. The dome light of every car stays on till dusk. Dandelions dispense Chinese fortunes. Things like, in less than a decade, no one will remember what cottage cheese is. Or, each man is a half-open door leading to a room for everyone. Satellites keep catching in the trees and periodically need to be poked out with broomsticks. Every picture is of you, bitten by sheep. And so I intentionally hid self view so I can't see what I look like because then I just tend to look at myself the whole time and this just like circle of narcissism. Um, so hopefully I'm in frame, but um, this one, um, I was trying to capture the feeling of a motel. Um, I actually lived in one for a year, which is kind of a fun fact. Um, so this one is called City of Motels. On a taupe chair, with no definitive edges, you watch clouds clot, contemplate a 1992 lost to rewinding VHS cassettes. 
All you ever wanted was a box big enough to hide in. The soap is tiny and shaped like various waterfowl. The telephone ringing in the other room will be your only remainder. Um, this one is called City of Glass Houses and it's kind of about Facebook. Um, when Facebook was still a thing people did. Um, cities of Glass Houses. There are only seven names, so everyone must share. The phone book consists mostly of photographs. Shadows leave smears. Each evening, we listen as our sleep machines describe what night was. At least two ghosts for every one of us. Um, this one, um, I was trying to capture that moment, you know, when you're hungover and it, it's just like terrible, but you can kind of see the clouds parting. You know, you're like, you're like not there, but you can kind of feel like it's gonna be okay. Um, so this one is called City of Hangover Sundays. Mannequins left outside, buzz with mold. The tombstones are chalk. In between, inflatable sheep graze as a cops of toddlers in pajamas picks them up and puts them down. Their laughter is the rain. On the sidewalk, glass, glass snails leave strings of Vaseline. Um, and then, I don't have too many topical poems. Um, and sadly, I wrote this in a string of police murders years ago before our current string of police murders. Um, this one is called City of the Police. Everything's coded in the Mercury, sorry, let me start over. Um, City of the Police. Everything's coded in the Mercury backing of mirrors. Blood draws baby fingers under gouged eyes. Everyone holds a tiny radio boiling dictations of citizen sin. Our shoes are shiny as pills. Knees broken or bent, it doesn't matter to us. Um, and then um, connected to that, I was trying to think of a poem that described what it felt like to, to have white privilege. Um, and so this one is called City of the White. You walk spaces, Immaculate is paint. Oil doesn't stain the cups. Newspapers make a skin over every surface. The violins are strung with human hair. Step carefully. If you have to ask who the devil is, it's you. Um, and then, how am I doing? Um, yeah, thank you for the hands up. It's it's hard when you can't hear clapping. Um, You're fine on time if you want to read uh, one or two more, Matt. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what you were asking. Thank you. Okay. No, that's good. I'll I'll actually let me prioritize. This isn't really that hard a decision. Um, I'll do I'll do two more. So I'll do. Um, this one is Salvation Army. So yeah, like a lot of white academics my age, I was big into the thrift store. So, so I was trying to capture, you know, like the experience of being in a Salvation Army. And I wrote a bunch of these and this is the one I think was the best. Salvation Army. Everywhere they lie, a thousand sets of Russian dolls, haphazard and mismatched. If anyone remembers what the war was for, they don't let on. There's not much to be saved, really. A handful of shells, a vintage dinette set in good condition, an electric typewriter. How do you survive what you've already lived through? You can't stay in love forever. This grubby towel will make a nice enough flag. Someone's got to polish what's left of the silver we can't all be heroes. Um, and I'll read, 
I'll read the last poem in the book, um, which gives away the ending, but that's all right. Um, it's called uh, Orphan or Not. The Roma band sounds like a thousand trumpets falling down a staircase. The martial stars of fireworks and the brunette I'm dancing with. Surely I loved her once. A weathered octogenarian sells aluminum violins and rotary telephones from his chosen alley. A flock of origami pigeons made from cigarette foils breaks like a window and regroups. Surely I loved her once, this sky over my train wreck. Children chase a pair of argyle socks over the bricks of the square as the river chokes with paper boats. When I die, don't bury me deep. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming. It's so good to see people I haven't seen in so long. Thank you, Alan yeah. and Christy, for putting this together. Thank you, Clarence, for reading with me. Um, that was awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was so good. So good. Don't go anywhere, anyone. We've got Clarence up next. But yeah, Matthew, that was excellent. Excellent. Um, great, Matt. So uh, yeah, next week up we have Clarence. We want to read his bio here. Uh, Clarence Harlan Orsi is a graduate of the PhD program in writing at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Go Huskers! His essay and fiction have appeared in publications including Believe Her, Boston Review, Kenyon Review, New England Review, and N Plus One. He's an associate professor of English at the Cecil College Community College in Northern Maryland. He lives in Baltimore, where he's a member of a community water ballet troupe competes in a tiny food competition and does other precious quirky things. Many wonderful quirky things because I know him. Um, so take it away, Clarence. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you know, you never know quite what tone to, to hit with those bi biographies. I was like, I need to put in a little something. And then I was like, wow, I really sound eccentric in a like, um, I don't know, too precious way. And so then I added that. But that's okay. I'm, I'm happy with my, my life choices. Um, Matt, that was awesome to hear your poems. I love them. And I love what you were saying about um, spatializing feelings that really resonated with me. Um, and then, you know, sort of the idea of like taking a city and making a feeling about it, you know, or, or taking a feeling and making a city about it. It reminds me of um, Italo Calvino's Invisible Cities, which is one of my favorite books. Um, so I love that. And yeah, I think I was sort of trying to do that. So this is my only Nebraska story. Um, I may write more, but this is the only one that has come to me so far. <laughs> um, and it is, I just, I imagined, I like to imagine like different groups of people like somehow being forced into the same circumstance and then what happens. <laughs> um, but something did actually happen related to this, which is that um, my transgender group was meeting at the Planned Parenthood and there were often anti-abortion protesters in front of that and at one point I did sort of yell at them a little bit and so I kind of I kind of took that and made that like a, a, a long story so here we go <laughs> I won't read all the story don't worry it'll just be some of it okay buffer zone the protesters were out even though there weren't any abortions that day even though the sky had puckered against a sour wind and the drizzle had thickened to sheets. God is punishing Omaha, they shouted at passing cars. There were three of them, two in early old, a man and a woman and a college-aged girl. The people they shouted at had their windows up due to the wind and rain, so it was doubtful anyone could hear them. We laughed at their futility until we began to suspect that they were right. Local TV reported that the weather truly was concentrated within the city limits. Our city that had just passed LB 322, which made abortion legal until the end of the second trimester. The suburbs were only gray. Relatives near and far texted us to make sure we were all right, though I noted the absence of concern from my own parents. I'm safe if anyone cares, I texted them. My mother sent a thumbs up emoji. My father sent a gif of a cat taking shelter in an overturned cardboard box. They weren't sure what to do with me, so they had begun avoiding language altogether. Because of the tint of the windows, the protesters couldn't see inside the Planned Parenthood 
where we were having our meeting. But if they could, they would have seen something like an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Chairs around a mucus colored carpet, donuts and burnt coffee on a table in the back. That day, there were just five of us at the meeting of the Nebraska Transgender Support Group, Omaha chapter. And maybe it was the electric charge of the storm, or maybe it was just that we were a little tired of the normal subjects, our complicated family histories and questionable mental health and bodies between someplace and someplace else, but we were happy to be distracted by the protesters. Sasha was the most excited about them. I'd known Sasha since kindergarten, since she was a furtive dark haired boy with an elephant crescent of a smile, so characteristic it might qualify as a pre-existing condition. And if there was one thing I knew she loved, it was other people's trouble. Now she visored her hand to her forehead, pressed her face against the window and said, voice thick with anticipation, they're inside the buffer zone. She was right. The protesters had inched their way out of the rain and under the concrete awning. We could have them arrested, Sasha continued. Come off it, said Ellen, who had just left her wife and kids to become what she'd always wanted to be. It's awful outside. We should really invite them in. Our group leader, Tony, who was practical because he was responsible for us, and far enough in his transition that he'd had the sentimentality ironed out of him, shook his head. The office manager trusted me with the keys. I can't tell them we let the damn protesters in. So don't tell them, said Sasha, who had just switched her plan to arrest the protesters and now sided with Ellen for adventure's sake. I had an idea. Or, more accurately, testosterone had an idea. Testosterone told me to go talk to the protesters myself. Testosterone wanted me to impress Sasha, to get a little reckless, to change the way she thought she knew me. Before anyone could object, I got up and walked down a hallway lined with posters urging us to look for signs of domestic abuse and STDs through a waiting room with, a darkened, with darkened TV screens and stacks of old magazines and a counter enclosed by bulletproof glass and to the outer door. The wind was so bad the door resisted opening and when it did, pellets of sharp water marbled my face. All three of them jumped and the college girl dropped her poster. Maybe they hadn't known anyone was in the building after all. Oh, the old woman said. The old man cleared his throat. The college girl said, who are you? Who was I? I could no longer take the question for granted, if I ever could. I was Eli Ledbetter, formerly Emily, 22 years old, a pale specimen belying hardy enough Midwestern descent, 0.2 milliliters of testosterone circulating semi-monthly through my veins, ready like we all are to start life anew. I said, it's getting pretty bad out here. Do you want to come in? They didn't. Coming in, I suppose, would have meant admitting a kind of defeat. The old man moved out from under the awning as if to prove he didn't need anything from me. A passing car sprayed him with water and he grimaced and spat but stayed where he was and again raised his sign overhead and I went back to my group. Sasha was talking about how her parents disowned her. Her legs twisted together on the metal chair flower-covered Doc Martens hooked on the bottom rung. My father reached over the table and grabbed my hand. He saw my purple nails and turned to my mom and said, the bitch isn't lying. Robin, who was trying to stay somewhere between a man and a woman, put a comforting hand on Sasha's shoulder. I'd been telling the fucker, Sasha said. He just didn't believe me or he wouldn't accept it, I guess. I don't know why the nails were what did it. I had to stop myself from wrapping my arms around her. Come live with me, I wanted to say. Maybe I would work up the courage and say it later. Granted, my circumstances weren't ideal. I lived in a crappy hovel off the University of Nebraska Omaha campus whose rent I could barely afford with my job at the textbook resale store. But maybe it would be enough for Sasha, who I wanted desperately to protect, mainly because protecting her would distract me from myself. Tony lifted the coffee pot to examine the dregs. My parents didn't talk to me for years, he said. Then my dad had a heart attack and realized life was too short for that foolishness. Tony started, Sasha started to say something, but Robin pointed at the window. The old woman was knocking. She must have guessed at where we were because it was clear she still couldn't see in. Her eyes didn't register us. They caved, Sasha said, and we grinned at each other like children who have just started a small fire. I went back the way I'd come to let them in. Now I could see that they really had no choice but to shelter with us. 
The hail came down fast and dense and hurt when it hit. On the ground, it sounded like knuckles popping. It wouldn't have even been safe for them to walk to their cars. Inside the waiting room, their plastic ponchos dripped on the carpet. It occurred to me that they dressed for the weather, even though no one had predicted the storm or any storm at all. They'd known not only that God would strike Omaha down, they'd known exactly how. I took them down the hall past the STD posters. The old man was muttering that they needed to pray even before we reached the meeting room. Welcome, Tony said, and there was no way anyone he meant it, but our guests didn't acknowledge him or anyone else. Shh, they're praying the sin away, Sasha said. The protesters had joined hands and bowed their heads in the center of the circle of chairs. They had leaned their posters against the right wall. Because of the rain, the bloody fetus looked like it was crying. The effect, I had to admit, was powerful. Woe to us, unhappy beings, if you, O oh Lord, have cast us into hell, for from that dungeon of eternal pain there is no deliverance. We love you above all things, O infinite God, and we are sincerely sorry for having offended you. Grant us the grace of holy perseverance. Have compassion on us, and at the same time, on the suffering souls around us. I knew bowing your head was supposed to signify humility, but to me it looked like they were all examining something on the center of the carpet, a stain or a trap door. When the prayer was over, they raised their heads and seemed to see where they really were for the first time, and the college girl asked, what is this meaning anyway? Yes, I said to make Sasha snicker. Well, she paused, are you homosexuals? It killed me, that word, so outdated and clinical, coming from someone my age. We're all getting abortion, Sasha said, but we're wayward. We're not sure of our path. You might be able to talk us out of it. Don't rile them, said Ellen. She's kidding, she added to the protesters. Tony, who couldn't help but act the group leader, even when he didn't want to, appeared with three more folding chairs. We scooted so he could set them up next to a shelf of anatomically correct vagina hand puppets used in teaching demonstrations. But the anti-abortionists did not sit down. They looked like they thought we might have something they could catch. Like if they sat down, they might soon find themselves performing a skit with the vagina puppets. Sit down, Tony said, trying a command. But still, the anti-abortionists did not sit down. They were figuring us out, the faint scruff on the faces of Sasha and Ellen, my short stature and regrettably still high voice, Robin's utter indeterminability. The old woman whispered something in, into the old man's ear. You're tr transsexuals, he said, proud as a boy getting the right answer in a spelling bee. Well, you shouldn't have said it out loud, the old woman said. Well, I'll be damned, the old, woman, the old man said. The college girl said, can you even get pregnant? That's where I'm gonna stop. Oh, so good. Very good. Thank you all. And, uh, if you wanna see, uh, read the rest of that essay, the uh, going up on the, the Zoom group chat, and you'll see a link to it. And you can read the rest of it for yourself after having Clarence read the first part for you. Um, just a uh, quick question, does anyone know a, a Diltz who's tried to log in? No? Okay, just then yeah. I assume we're just going to ignore that person. Okay, um, so I guess we have a couple minutes uh, for questions. If someone would like to ask questions for our readers, you can either ask in the ch group chat or you can unmute yourself. Uh, I, I should have it set up so you can unmute yourself and just uh, ask away. Thank you for those of you who showed up. Yeah. I want to add that, strangely hour. enough, it is uh, raining. That's uh, Mike, Michael Herrick uh, asking a question. Hi, Michael. You're I Michael. feel like uh, Go Bearcats since we said... Uh, I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, how, how, how the, both of the readings were really amazing. Um, uh, I'm going to ask the dumb question. Like, you know, how they're, the reader, you know, the dumb... So what, what inspired... Um, <laughs> I just really wanted to say that those are both awesome. Um, so I don't really have a question. I just <laughs> wanted to say that that was amazing. That was a great, uh, Clarence. I, I don't I don't know you or your work, but that's awesome. It's great. Hi, Michael. Great to meet you. Thank you for coming to this reading. Yes, this is my first sense. reading. Is this like? Have you all participated in this kind of thing before? It's kind of weird. This is my first time doing it, so it's like. Very strange, but cool. Yeah, I'm really glad Christine Allen did this. It is very weird. Um, 
I... <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, I don't know. It's, it's so hard to do things over Zoom. I don't know. It's, it's just such a strange world we're in. It's so alienating. So I really appreciate, like, Michael, I really appreciate you um, asking a question and, like, your, your faces, seeing your faces. Like, it's just, we're, we're all just stuck in our little hovels right now. And it's so isolating. So I don't know what my point was there. Um, Matt, do you want to talk about what your inspiration was? <laughs> I'm good. No, uh, poor, poor Michael's probably heard some of these before. I really appreciate his presence. Um, oh, no, yeah, I, I, that, it's good to hear him again, though. Yeah, I, uh, and I actually, I didn't, I didn't, I actually left my USB, so I didn't have any of my new stuff, which is good because it kind of forces you, sometimes when you have a book, like after a little time goes by, you're like, yeah, these suck. And then, you know, like, and you want to do your new stuff, but then when you read it, you're like, yeah, all right, it's, it's not too bad. Um, not that that's a really a modest comment. So you can mock that when I'm not, when I'm no longer on the Zoom call. But I think, yeah, no, it's, I've done a couple Zoom readings and they're good. It's a weird, it's hard to put your finger on it. It's, it's great. It's better than, you know, like it's poetry, right? Like, especially now and it's live poetry when you can't get anywhere else. But, you know, if you're watching a real reading, like you wouldn't be like within, like the way the Zoom is set up, you'd be like two feet away from them, right? You'd be like face to face, like borderline, like make out distance. And so it's weird, but it's, you know, like when you don't have, I haven't been to a, a live reading in, you know, months and months. And I saw, it, it could be cool if it catches on. I mean, I saw Ruth in Kansas City and I wouldn't have, you know, been able to see that normally or I wouldn't have been able to catch you. So it's one of those double-edged swords, I guess. In comments. <laughs> so wait, so explain explain to me how you and, and Matthew and Ruth know each other. We went to school together. Let's see. Oh, and, okay. Cincinnati. So you all went to Cincinnati. Yeah, I got a lot of my Cincinnati peeps uh, up in here. Um, and because Chrissy and I are sitting right next to each other, if, you, if you've got the, the spot view on, uh, you're seeing her right now. But um, because uh, I have my mic off for that reason. But anyway, um, yeah, a lot of these people are from Cincinnati. It was great to see so many Bearcats come, and um, yeah, <laughs> uh, almost like a class reunion or some alumni thing. Well, what's a Bearcat? Oh. Well, and a Bearcat is a really yes. stinky animal. Okay. <laughs> I saw. I don't know what a Bearcat is. Actually. It's like the. It's the school thing there, you know. Yeah, it's, it's our mascot. It's the way a, that Clarence and I husk corn as a lot. <laughs> it's a fun thing I, to I, I saw one at the zoo, and they're not that bear. big. Like, a bear cat's, like, about the size of a large otter. Like, they're not really, for a mascot, you can find something <laughs> a lot more ferocious. Uh, I, I always thought Taft was the mascot of UC. <laughs> 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 I really like Michael's backdrop. He's got um, nine million books just haphazardly piled in the best. In I the love best. that too. Yeah, yeah. I have, like I, I'm, I'm so desperate for bookshelves. It's terrible. <laughs> I mean, also, your drinking vessel is very nice looking, Michael. I yeah, know this, that. This actually, my dad took me to a glass blowing thing. Where Get out of here. Like they, did the, my dad's into glass stuff. So, did you make that? I, I mean, I didn't make it. The guy did, but I, I did something. I like oh, okay. the thing. You I'm said like, green or something like that. Right. Yeah. I just, I'm like, that's yeah, important. Green. <laughs> that's build a, it's like build a bear with glass blowing, right? Like basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like I didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's even more interesting. I was just going to compliment your good taste, but there you go, being even more awesome than I could have ever. Well, I mean, been. again, I didn't make it, but you know, <laughs> it's cool. I like it. Well, I like it. While I have everyone here, let, you know, we can continue talking. We can ask more questions, but I do want to say that the next reading that we're having is August sixth. That's the next Thursday, Thursday after this one, six thirty, same time, six thirty central. We're going to have Lupe Linares and Stephen J. Furlong. So I'll let you Google those great people. Um, 
very good writers. Should be poetry, uh, personal friend with us. Poetry so. and nonfiction. Poetry and nonfiction. So uh, that yeah, that is so great. Yeah. I love Lupe, as you all know. Yeah, another very funny person. I mean, just no pressure for our future readers. Oh yeah, but yeah. we had two <laughs> comedians yeah, on here did. tonight. Clarence and Matt, what a dreamy well matchup. But well, what, Lupe, what is Lupe it? has um Lupe has cool backdrops. So um I saw that she she does her teaching in front of um a taxidermy backdrop because she's really into taxidermy. Yeah. So, that sounds like Lupe. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if she busted out the taxidermy backdrop for this reading. She's also a dinosaur enthusiast, if that encourages you to yeah, love yeah. her or you meet I'll, her. Um, more. I will 90% be there. I'm going to put it on the calendar. That's high. I'm excited. Know, you know, but I will say 90. Thank you. I, I did want to say, I don't know if this is a question or just something I appreciate craft-wise, but the way that both of you differently work in like this biting humor in mm -hmm. the midst of such like tough things to explore, such rough, like I said, rough and beautiful to something that, that Matt wrote. Um, mm. and same thing for Clarence. Um, I, I think that that's just fantastic how you, how you work that out. It, it, it's kind of like a puzzle I'm working out in my mind. Like how, how can I incorporate that in my writing that, that kind of humor that comes from these really stressful situations. So I, I guess I, instead of a question, I just want to say, I really appreciated that about both of your writing. Thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. I do find that if I'm, if I go for the funny that allows me to access something, um, I find that if I write, if I try to write, um, if I try to go for the conflict, especially immediately, I start writing in this really portentous, heavy way that makes me hate myself. But if I write, if I try to be a little bit funny and try to see like, oh, like what would be funny about this situation, then I can kind of slip in some ah daggers to the heart and they feel a little bit more impactful, at least to me, um, when I'm doing that with the funny stuff. So I, I appreciate that, that you said that, Alan. That's great. Thank you. Oh, I thought you killed it with that, Clarence. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So Matt, you said you're, um, you're, you're, oh, you didn't say, but you're, you're at, um, you're in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I am in uh, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. It is famous for getting burned down in the Civil War. Uh, it's the only northern town burned down. Um, I guess we're over it, judging by the amount of rebel flags that we have in town, but um, oh, I guess man. forgotten and forgiven, I guess, but um, that's what we're known for. No, no, not forgiven, yeah. not forgiven. That's funny. So how, I wonder how far you are from me because I'm in Baltimore, so. Oh yeah, you're like, you're about an hour away. Oh wow, okay, cool. Yeah, I um I teach at Cecil College, which is um in Northern Maryland. So that's probably like right next to you, if it's an hour away in the Pennsylvania <laughs> region. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, and that they are extremely conservative there. It's not fun. Yeah, we're <laughs> we actually we so just sorry. got written up in New York Times. They did a, a New York Times article. We had our Black Lives Matter protest. So it went on for they're still going on. Actually, there's one girl who's out there every weekend um, with like one or two other people. Um, but they did a New York Times article titled uh, Black Lives Matter Comes to Small Town America. Uh, oh gosh, I article. saw that. Was that you? That's Chambersburg. So that's that my downtown. So. Oh my God. I mean, not my downtown. But yeah. So that's us. Small Town America, according to you New know, York Times. I was so impressed because they have Black Lives Matter protests at Cecil in, in Cecil County as well. And I was like, I did not know that those people existed. So it was actually really heartening for me to see because, yeah. Um, yeah, I just was, I, you know, I had sort of painted the whole county with a broad brush, which is a problem anyway, but, um, but they really did, they really did come out to protest in Cecil too. So that was amazing. Are you, are you living in Baltimore or are you living out there? No, I'm living in Baltimore and I commute to, to Cecil. I mean, not anymore because it's, you know, pandemic, but, but yeah. We'll have a little more time if the, if the two readers want to talk more about uh, the, their connection. But I do want to uh, just quickly open it up to any uh, other literary questions about the work. <laughs> 
I just didn't want anyone to feel pressure to ask a question, so I thought I should start running my mouth. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, we love you, and you're, oh, you're I love you too. The way that you always have something to say, <laughs> because I have that uh, affliction slash gift as well, and so yeah, mm -hmm. you're gold. We just didn't want any quiet folks yeah. sitting on you know, mm -hmm. questions to uh, feel like they couldn't say anything. And again, you can uh, type it in the, the group chat, or if you want to unmute yourself. Quick way to unmute yourself if you're not familiar with Zoom very well, uh, you can just hit the space bar, it'll temporarily unmute you. Uh, Whoa. I mean, hold it down, you have to hold it down. Yeah, I didn't know that until just yesterday, so, yeah. <gasps> I love that. <laughs> so you can do that and, and ask your question and then release the space bar. I wonder what other magical shortcuts there are that make Zoom even lazier. <laughs> and I'd like to know what they are. <laughs> Wow, Clarence, that's wait, the wait, real wait. show wait. you're putting on for us. I, I was trying to do something. Okay, wait. I'll just talk, because why not? Um, but giving a Zoom reading, it, it is sort of a new frontier, right? Um, I gave a reading in May for my recent book, that came out, and that was surreal, because there's no one, like, clearing their throat or... Um, there's no angry white guys in the front row making faces at your poems and that kind of thing, but no. <laughs> they, they know how to Google. Alan, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's so strange because you are more connected and yet, um, you know, in a vacuum of silence, just offering up your work to the altar of the internet. But I feel really excited about it, and there's a pickle. That is disturbing. I mean, so how many right times there. have you heard that, your what I was to trying to do library? Library. What's wrong with that pickle? I mean, other than it having been personified and then killed. <laughs> you know, Ruth left. <laughs> I just noticed she was like, yeah. <laughs> what is that clarence i don't know i so it's something called snap camera which means that you can do funny things with your zoom so that's you were asking about exciting things you could do with zoom and if you download snap camera you can become a pickle thank you <laughs> anytime <laughs> okay. well on yeah. that note can you, can you, um can you put a link in, into your book that you're referring to oh yeah sure uh Alan, anything else you want to tell folks before Just, uh, we sign off? We'd love to have you at other readings. Uh, you know, see this thing grow even more. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, you know, last week was a, a weird week for us because we had a lot of people bombing trolls, um, trolls, trolls. Are and the that really was an interesting thing to handle. Oh no! I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you know, it 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 it's kind of like on the job training almost, you know. And they weren't bad. They were, I mean, as far as trolls go. Yeah, they were quite uncreative. Yeah, and they changed um, their name to my name and said, "I don't give they, a fuck." And I'm like, "Well, okay." <laughs> like, he, yes, everyone was fooled. He doesn't <laughs> care about this thing he's hosting <laughs> slash s right. That's the internet. But there's like sarcasm. there wasn't any racism or any like homophobia or anything okay. like that. Okay, that's good. Like, fuck, I can say fuck. I'm 12 years old, you know. So you it, probably it, not it's, it's, What's that? They probably that is the I made. Yes. No, Alan. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, we're glad that didn't happen. But it, it's uh, if. I don't know what to say. It, Alan a said a very great thing about it being like experiential learning. I mean, I think it's an yeah. interesting environment, and I wonder when, hopefully, when, not if, this is all over. You know, when we can meet face to face again. I wonder if we'll we'll still be coming to these kind of electronic things, like Matt said. Like you're within kissing distance. Like you can be right up on an author. So you know, calling it, you know, if 
you know, you're at a reading with one of your favorite authors, you can see their face, you can see them sweat, you know, you can see like their <laughs> eyes kind of twitch. And, uh, you know, that, that, that forbids a certain kind of intimacy, but also allows it. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the future of this is. I'm really excited. I guess that's all my, my only point about it. <laughs> thank you, too, for doing this. This is a cool project. I like this. Yes, thank you. I like that you've taken yeah. this, this time of um, horribleness and made something good out of it. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you for praising us. It's <laughs> close here before too long. <laughs> so, uh, last chance for questions, thoughts? I mean, I ideas. have no problem with the way it devolved into a love fest, but I just wanted to make sure everyone could, you know, ask their Norton critical theory type questions and that kind of thing. Michael, did you want to say something? I saw you unmuted yourself and then you're like, nah. No, I'm just, I also can have the diarrhea mouse, so. <laughs> no, it's a, this, this is great. I, I just, I'm just sort of concurring, like this is, this is great. And yeah. the experience is actually pretty awesome. Like it's, I kind of, I was thinking like um, the idea of like, I don't know, sometimes I don't want to go out to readings just sort of for introverted reasons, kind of. Um, totally, so kind of yeah. Breaks that boundary a little bit, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. You know. So it's, There's yeah. a lot of power in being able to mute yourself too and then like yeah. cough or eat combos or whatever. I don't yeah. know. Um, or not even, you know, have a visual presence. Though I do like that idea of like, it's weird. Wow. And that idea was like, hey, the, we're, look, we're the audience looking at the audience. Kind of too, right? Yeah. Wow, See? that's super meta. Well, I mean, you don't, get to, you don't get to stare at the audience. Like, if you're in the audience, you have to like look at the author. You're not forced to do that anymore. Right. You can look at it, everything. You know. Right. Yeah. Maybe people will simulate it in the future when they go back to bookstores. Everyone will just be fashioned with a mirror in the audience because you know that <laughs> is sort of the, the effect of the Zoom, and you're like, yeah, you're talking, but going on here and then people can just look into the mirrors and I'm uh with Matt not looking at himself because i can't stop looking at myself no that's i have oh, to do that like literally because yeah. i can't when you have a person to person one it's really bad because you can't turn it off and i want to look at the yeah. person of course and you're just looking you're like too self-conscious to look at yourself i don't know if it's narcissism or self-consciousness or probably a little bit of both like that it's like, I need to know what I look like on the camera and I just have to turn it off. It's like, right, right, right. Facilitating. I don't know how I had a human yeah, conversation. You could do that. I'll hide self view. Okay. Oh, wow. That's okay. But now I miss myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love the David Foster Wallace. Yeah. I, that, that is a <laughs> point. Yes. Giuseppe tried to, to veer us back toward the land of the thinking. Bless you and your <laughs> observations um I, I think it's true you know it, that a lot of good can come out of this especially for people who are differently abled i mean we're pretty lucky that we can we can go to in-person readings and that sort of stuff but i think there's a lot of potential for it and you know zoom has so many rivals sorry zoom for what i'm about to say but what is the one we saw yesterday hun flipvid no, that's, what, that's something else that, but, that wouldn't do this. Okay, but what it does do is the person who takes the video, it automatically captions it. And I think that's incredibly underrated. So Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, uh, so um, apparently that won't work, says Alan, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are fantastic. We can't mm -hmm. wait to see you again. And uh, our hope is to keep this running. Through. Right now, we have, I think, till the middle of September mm -hmm. scheduled, which we just feel yeah. so lucky and honored to have so many writers uh -huh. want to be involved in us. Um, and that doesn't include a redo, because when uh -huh. the trolls happened, we were like, nah, let's do this again with this yeah. pair of readers. We've got Rebecca yeah, yeah. Frank, who said yeah. he would read, uh, they would read, and um, uh, David James Poisson. Um, 
just a lot of fantastic Didn't readers. Nick White say he would read? I don't know. I don't remember that. Well, but... never mind. <laughs> just forget but that. But maybe Nick White. We'll see. Uh, just a lot of really strong writers, including the, the present writers. And uh, yeah, I think this is going great places. So thank you everyone for coming. I think we're going to have to, in a minute, it's going to shut us off whether we want to or not. So um, <laughs> thank you everyone for coming. Have a great, wonderful rest of your day. And uh, yeah, again, just thank you for reading and thank you for being here. Yes, thank you, Christy and Alan. Great to meet the rest of you. I'm gonna put my Twitter in the chat really quickly before we leave because some people might like still wanna be. I just got on Twitter, so this is good. I tried to, yeah, follow you today. Requested oh, to be you. a follower of Clarence. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go approve you. Yes, and uh, just thank you so much. And I feel always obligated to add. I don't know if it's like very gendered or maternal, but whatever. Like, go eat some chocolate or like drink some nice wine. Do something <laughs> because life. You know, there's so much out of our control right now. Like, I'm trying to keep it professional and positive, and but you know what I'm saying. So do something to make it even more awesome for yourself today this reading you guys are both not only very talented but very funny and uh we are loving that energy so thank you and hopefully we'll see you soon and i'm just really glad got to hear from and meet everyone and uh, bye. bye bye, bye.